I want to thank you because um, I know that I know that this has been traumatic for a lot of people actually even coming on the show to talk about this because it sort of regurgitates the nightmares and I understand that and I want to thank you so much for joining us um, and being a part of this Absolutely. show because these are things people need to know about and what I'm going to do is put you on hold, hang out as long as you want but I know you've got little ones there um, so I yes. just want to thank you so much for participating in this. Um, and uh, so anyway, I'm going to put you on hold now as we move along. And thank you again, Claire. Thank yes, you thank for having you. me. I appreciate it. And happy thank you birthday. Thank very much. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, we don't have time to sing happy birthday, but you can envision all of us getting together and singing very <laughs> off-key happy birthday to you. Now, I've un unmuted uh, Lori for our next guest. Take it away, Al. Sure. Hi, Lori. You there? Hi, Al. Yes, I am. Great. Um, Lori is a former Scientologist who has experienced the nightmare of what Scientology does to families. Her son, daughter, and ex-husband are still active members and have made the decision to follow the Scientology policy by disconnecting from her. Um, Lori, welcome to the show. You joined when you were only 13. Was this voluntary? Yes. My mom was taking uh, the first course called the Communication Course. And she asked me if I would like to come down because I was very shy. And uh, she thought that might help me. So I went down and, and signed up for the communication course. Okay, now I understand you recently left. Uh, what was it that um, caused you to leave? Um, I wrote, it's very hard for me to talk about, so I wrote this out and it will explain everything. It's only about seven minutes and um, it will explain why I left. It's mostly about my children and what happened to them when they both turned 15 years old. Okay, is this the, um, the story you had published online, uh, the open letter no, to your children? No, it's a little different. This is a lot of things that I haven't shared that I'm willing to share now, what happened to them. Um, I, I've shared some of it, but um, I'd like to you know, say it to you, and you can kind of know why I left. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go, ahead. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to start off with that I was not aware of what could happen to my children when they turned 15. It was a nightmare. I'm happy to hear that Katie Holmes was aware enough to leave Scientology and is trying hard to keep Surrey far away from them. My daughter Jessica was recruited to work for Scientology behind my back at age 15. She was an honor roll student and wanted to go to college to be a veterinarian. But after she went down to the organization with my ex-husband, she was shown a she was shown a Scientology recruiting movie that completely manipulated her goals and dreams. She came home and told me she wanted to get her GED and work full-time for Scientology at our local organization. I did not agree, and I fought the church to keep her in school and get a proper education. After much harassment, I finally agreed for her to go back to a Scientology school and finish her high school education there. Then we could talk about her going on staff. But little did I know that they planned to have her graduate after four months, and she got a non-accredited high school diploma at 16. She signed a five-year staff contract at age 16. They sent her to Florida for training. After a couple of months, she got homesick and came back to do her training near home. She didn't like being on staff and broke her five-year contract. I think that's pretty insane, having a 16-year-old sign a contract. As a result of leaving, she was assigned a $12,000 debt, approximately, for her training and 100 hours of amends for deciding to leave before she fulfilled her contract. I'm going to move on to my son, Jeremy. But if you're interested to know more, my full story is a mother's heartbreak on Ava Thomas's blog. Two years later, I had to have a knee replacement. And when I was recovering from the surgery, my ex-husband took my son Jeremy, he was only 15 years old, down to Scientology for a Sea Org recruiting event behind my back. Jeremy was brainwashed and manipulated to sign a billion-year contract to work for the church, quit school, and move to Florida and give his life to Scientology. Jeremy came home that evening from the event, and while I was in a lot of pain from my knee surgery, he said to me, I want to join the Sea Org and leave soon. 
I was very upset by this and said, no, you cannot. You can decide that when you're 18 years old. I was against it, against this and fought it for six months. I did everything possible to fight this. My parental rights were completely violated. They broke me down. They were slamming on my door while I was trying to recover. The fear of the they were slamming on my door, pressuring my family, going over to my mom's house late at night, trying to get her to handle me to let my son go. And they constantly harassed me. I ended up back in the hospital because of having no rest from the harassment and I finally let Jeremy go. They didn't give up until they had my son. I knew if I didn't agree with Scientology, I would lose my son because they would have, they would have had me declared back then. I felt I had no choice, and I was physically not doing well because my knee replacement the doctor put in was too big. I had to have another knee surgery six months later. And while I was in the hospital, my daughter Jessica says goodbye to me as she was also coerced, um, she was also coerced into joining the Sea Org. The following day, I was so devastated from losing both my children to Scientology. I was still in the hospital the day after my surgery that I went into shock and almost lost my life. The previous day, I had a drip blood transfusion. My dad was with me and had to get help. He went running down the hallways and he got the medical response team. They came in and they saved my life. Thank God my dad was there. When I came to, I realized I have to make some changes. You know, I need to stay strong because this isn't right. Jessica lasted one month in Florida after she went to join the Sea Org. She hated it and she routed out. She told me that she wanted to leave after day three and they kept her there against her will for one month. Jeremy was there also. He lasted seven months and he routed out. While he was gone in the Sea Org, and I was in all the physical pain from my knee surgery, I called him daily and was only able to talk to my son for five times in seven months. He told me after he had left that he cried every night to come home, which was kept from me. They kept that from me. When he decided to leave, they made him stay off the base for several days in a separate building with a security guard from Scientology keeping an eye on him. I remember talking to him on Thanksgiving Day and found this out. I asked him, hey, son, um, how was your dinner? He said, mom, I'm not allowed to be around anyone because I went to leave, so I didn't get a Thanksgiving dinner. He sat in that room by himself. I was beyond upset. It took me all day to get through on the phone to be able to talk to him. I later found out that Scientology made him sign a $3 million gag contract to never discuss what happened while he was in the Sea Org. He was only 16 years old when he had to sign this. And we never got a copy either. Three million? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, you, yes. they made a 16-year-old? Yeah. million dollars at 16 years old. They made him, him sign this, and they said if he discusses what he saw or what happened in the Sea Org, he would have to pay the Church of Scientology $3 million and he could never do Scientology again. He's 16. He can't tell anyone he signed this, and he believed it. He didn't realize that's not legal. But he had no one to talk to. Oh. He also, I know, he also had no official schooling and only got paid about 25 to $30 a week, probably worked over 10 hours a day. That's less than a dollar an hour. And he's not even getting schooling. He's taking Scientology classes to train for what he's doing there. The Sea Org promised me that my son would get his education and be able to talk to me anytime. The Sea Org knew Jeremy. This is how they got him in. Um, they knew Jeremy wanted a girlfriend so bad. So they told him that there are lots of pretty girls there. And when he was there, he wasn't even allowed to barely look at them. Every promise the Sea Org gave me was broken. They lie just to get your kids. After going through this ordeal with my children, I resigned from the Church of Scientology. You can never say anything negative hmm. about the church or you're declared. I was declared a suppressive person because I disagreed with what they did to my kids. Jessica and Jeremy were forced to disconnect from me. It's been two years since February. I've seen them. They are not allowed to talk to me. 
even when my son had a serious motorcycle accident a year ago and was in the emergency, I was not allowed to see him. I didn't even know if he was critical or not. As a mother, this was really traumatic. I went around the back of the ER and stood by the door waiting for someone to come out. I finally saw a nurse, and by then I was crying because I couldn't find out any information about my son. I didn't even know if he was stable. He had a really serious motorcycle accident, flew 30 feet or 20 feet, uh, doing a double, triple jump on a motorcycle track. I explained to the nurse that I had resigned from the Church of Scientology, and because of that, Scientology and my ex-husband are keeping me from my son. I asked, can I please see my son? The nurse said he couldn't do that, but that I could write a note to Jeremy, and he would make sure Jeremy receives it. I wrote my son a note asking if he is okay, and that I love him and want to see him. The nurse was able to give Jeremy the note while my ex was out of the room talking to the doctor. Jeremy read it in front of the nurse and told him to tell me he, will be, he is okay, or he will be okay, and that he just can't see anyone. I was so relieved that Jeremy was able to respond and happy that he got my note. The next day I went to the hospital and waited outside the surgery unit. Something changed and I was able to see my son. I think since it was a big Scientology flap in the news from not being able to see my son in the VR, Scientology got worried what I would do next if I couldn't see my son the next day. I was not going to be quiet, that's for sure. I was actually on the phone with Tony, Tony Ortega that day because I was, I was not going to let them keep me from seeing him. When Jeremy got out of surgery, the doctor asked to speak to me, and I was right there. When he got to his room, when, Jer when Jeremy got to his room, I went right in to see him, and I told him I've been here all day and that I'm glad he is going to be okay. I told him I loved him, and he said he loved me back. My daughter hugged me, and that's the last time I saw and talked to my kids. That was over a year ago. Two Christmases ago, I took my best friend Beth with me to deliver some Christmas presents to my kid's house. I planned it so I would possibly go when my son was home. After I dropped the presents off on their doorstep, as I left, Jeremy drove by in his tan truck. It was dark, and I didn't know it was him until we passed each other. He drove down to the end of the street and turned around. I drove down to see him, and he was on the phone with someone. He then slowly drove by me looking. But he wouldn't stop. He went to the end of the road and he hesitated for at least a couple minutes. Then he took off. I wasn't going to follow him and chase him down. I wanted to give him the chance to stop and talk to me. I know he has been terrified by Scientology and his father to not talk to me. Two weeks later, my daughter Jessica was ordered to give back my Christmas presents 